Good afternoon and welcome to Deeper Diving's YouTube channel where today we're going to have a conversation about everything we love about the marine world and about scuba diving. Now it's clear that we all love scuba diving. Here we are, we're talking about scuba diving. Here you are watching videos about scuba diving. So it's clear we're all scuba divers and passionate and love our scuba diving sport. And so what is it other things that we particularly love about scuba diving? And it's, it's for me, it's, it's those big encounters. It's the, the seeing the large pelagics, the big fish, the, the big wrasse or the groupers. It's encountering those big sharks. My God, I live for the day that I see a, a whale shark and you know, big, big sharks, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah? It's the rays, it's the mantas, it's all those big, big mantas and those big fish and, and really enjoying those. I love the big expanse, the big reefs out there and you know, all that magic and that. that. And I, I can't think of anything else that I would love, but we really love all that big stuff, don't we? Yeah, sort of, I mean, yeah. No? Sure. You, you don't love the big stuff. I do like the big stuff. The big stuff. I mean, it comes with the diving in general. You start diving, and that's the first thing you see. So, yes. Yeah. yeah. It's brilliant. Yeah. But but if what else is there out there if if it's not looking at that that immense world that's out there? So much more, Gary. So much more. <laughs> There's an entire different new world out there. There that is? You haven't discovered yet. And I have... I'm more than willing to show you. Okay, I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, I've, I've heard people talking about this, this dramatic different world, but I, I'll be honest, <laughs> I ain't seen it, I ain't seen it. Okay, so you're telling me there's this, this macro diving that's out there. What stuff's out there? Where, where, what is it? You know, where is it? I mean, I, I go diving on our dive sites and I see small stuff like pedicin shrimp and, and banded okay. coral shrimps yeah. and stuff like yeah. that. You know, that, that, that for me, that's, that's some small stuff. And that's pretty cool, you know, particularly when they climb on your fingers and clean out your fingernails yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah that's, that's small, yes. So, so what is it that you're talking about if it's not that? Smaller than that, like centimeter, even smaller than a centimeter. I mean, very, very teeny tiny organisms that live out there. Okay, so talk me through some of the critters that you would see then on a, I don't know, if you went out here onto the seagrass just outside the dive shop, okay. what, would you, what would you see out here? Okay, so other than the peddlers are shrimps and all kinds of shrimps, like the peddlers on the spotted cleaner shrimps, then we have the yellow line arrow crabs, banded coral shrimps, we have even a small little teeny tiny shrimp, or, or I'm not sure if it's a shrimp or a crab that lives on the puddle, like, algae thingies yep, that we have yep, here on the bay. Yep. Uh, then we have like fireworms, we have slugs, let's see slugs which are everywhere here in Kariku. Uh, then we have small little nudie branches and different kinds of slugs as well. Uh, and even the juvenile, juvenile fish that live here on the bay uh, looking for shelter, like juvenile puffer fishes for example, they're so teeny tiny and so beautiful and colorful and full of life. It's just, I, I, I'm in love with it. How, how did you know where to look? Because, you know, we, we yeah. dive here all the time and, and suddenly you're finding macro yeah, stuff. Yeah. Suddenly you're talking about macro stuff. How did you find where so, to log? Uh, I have to say that I was lucky enough to actually meet somebody who was working here at the time. Was it three years ago during pandemic? Yeah, 20, 2020. Yeah, 2019, 2020. Uh, her name is Yara, Yara Tibirisa. She's, um, she's got a PhD on nudie branches or something. And has discovered even nudie branches and... Um, what described nudie branches so she has like two or three species yep, yep. i don't know uh, the thing is that she had this really cool camera uh for uh macro stuff and she introduced me to the concept and she would do a two-hour dive just out here on the bay so the first thing it was just coming with her and very, very patient because at the same as you i was just next to her like i was looking at seagrass and sand what the hell so then she started spotting different things and, and, and showing me where to look for things. Okay, okay. So that's the first thing, you have to know where to look for. And then you get used to, you train your eye, and then you sort of start detecting patterns and movement that is like, ah, okay, this is different. And you start discovering things. Yeah, I do, yeah. I do remember being on a dive with Yara where she pointed something out to me. It was like, there, there it is, there it is. <laughs> yeah. and, and I'm looking going, there. She's like, yeah, uh, no, no. She's like, yeah. right there. And I'm, yeah. 
there. Yep. No, can't yeah. see it. And she even pointed my finger at, at the. There, there it is. There it is. And I, no, yeah. still can't see it. Yeah. So I, I, yeah, I didn't know what I was looking at. In that regard, what kind of diver do you need to be in order to be able to do this? Uh, well, first of all, I think it's worth mentioning that it's not for everybody. First of all, if you don't have a good set of eyes as yourself, and you're a little bit, you have a little bit of a limited vision you might actually maybe look for some tools to help you out. So if you're interested in um, going into macro diving and, and see what, what's it about, grab a magnifying lens. That's actually how it started. Because if you're not able to see what's there, you're not gonna get excited about it. You're just gonna find it meaningless and like a waste of time. You're gonna get bored. And that has so, been my experience. Yeah, so this helps quite a lot. And then uh, what Yara used to do with me, with her camera, she would just like point to it, focus and I would just look at the footage that she was taking so that was like oh my god it looks so good and it was oh, so wow. well focused and seeing it right there in the camera at the same time as I can actually oh focus my eyes and point at it uh, uh, that was that made it okay that, that's all the thing okay yeah and you've then answered the question I was gonna ask which was ah. how come I've never seen these things okay. and that's because yes. yeah I, I, I've yeah. never dived with one of these yeah but sure. you you have to be patient because it's, okay. not, it's not like all these little small organisms are, are gonna come out crawling and, and say hey here I am I mean you will have to yeah find your time be very patient you might spend half an hour and just I don't know two meters in a little square looking for things wow so yeah it's not for everybody it's not for everybody but I would seriously recommend it especially for someone who's maybe traveled all around the world and seen everything and even whale sharks are out of the bucket list go for macro diving because you're gonna be mesmerized and in love of this small little teeny tiny world you feel like a giant in the middle of this entire new world that, that is so full like, of color and different shapes and yeah. you feel like Gulliver in Gulliver's Kingdom exactly okay. exactly it's like oh my god yeah yeah and the other very important thing uh, buoyancy control becomes the most important thing uh, oh, God, you, yeah. you yeah, need yeah, to yeah, be yeah, able yeah. to stay very steady because it's very slow diving you need to be able to control your finning techniques quite well. And if you're gonna be using a magnifying la uh, lens or a camera, you need to also master your back finning uh, and, and really control that horizontal position so you don't get all silty. Silted and, up, uh, yep. Yeah. Yep. yeah, yeah, completely understand that. Very, very important. And so, apart from the magnifying glass, are there any other specialist tools, expensive specialist tools that you can need? How does the average person get started on this? I wouldn't say it's expensive. If you, really, if you really are interested in starting in this, we ourselves in the shop started with this. This is just a lens that attaches to your GoPro setting and it has a magnifying glass in, in front. It, it doesn't take the best footage, I have to say, I have to admit. And it's quite tricky to use because you have to maintain, you have to be very, very still and of course control your buoyancy and maybe go 10 to 15 centimeters close to your objective because otherwise it just goes out of focus. So it's not easy, but it's not expensive either. Right. And it, it, it's not the best footage, but it works to get you at least interested at the beginning to get you started. And then from here, I went to the uh, Olympus uh, RAF, tough, sorry, Olympus Tough TG6. Uh, this one is awesome. You don't have to be uh, a very ex expert or a, a professional uh, photographer to actually know how to use the camera. It comes with underwater settings for snorkeling, um, uh, then like uh, normal scenery and then portrait mode and a microscope uh, underwater mode. Oh wow, and it, it colour corrects all of that and, as well. And it colour corrects everything, so it's that, that's the best, it's the best thing ever. Okay. And the cool thing about it too is that you can do it, you, you can take your camera for snorkeling and without the housing, so that means that it's actually quite of a cheap and accessible uh, camera because you don't need to invest so much just to get this started. So you can, uh, since it's uh, waterproof to 15 meters, you can take it without a case. So Fantastic. it's very convenient, yeah. So I guess once you get started and you start seeing your sea goddesses and your sea slugs and your yes. shield bugs and, and what have you, shield leeches or whatever they are, it starts getting quite addictive, does it? Yeah. A little bit, a, a little, little bit. bit. I think I definitely hold the record for the amount of dives under the jetty here in the team. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, um, you're, you're out there every day really yeah, yeah i mean if i could I, I would definitely but yeah especially saturdays is like my jetty my jetty day uh, okay. for myself and uh f four days in a row i think that's yeah when we had the record. last group here you 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 certainly were 
going out yeah. there a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No and, and I love it. I mean, I, I would take normally an hour from the shop, uh, from the bay to go to the jetty, an hour at the jetty and then come back. Come back. We've noticed. Yeah. We're sitting here all afternoon and where the hell is Nora? We want to go home. Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah. and it's so shallow that you have an entire tank and you can be there forever. Right? That's, that is true. Um, so in that regard, for, for, from your perspective, in and around Karakou, where is the best place to go? It's the jetty, isn't it? Now for me, yeah. I, I told the group a couple of weeks ago that if I was a chef, I, I, that would be my signature dish, definitely, because yeah. I know that place so well. And uh, uh, it, it, it's a very distinctive place because it, it has all the pillars, the old pillars and very distinctive features. And it's beautiful with the lighting and everything. Yeah. It's very sunny. Uh, well, the visibility is incredible. You just get mesmerized by the amount of fish that we found out there. But there's also a lot of debris, a lot of garbage, and the macro staff actually love that. I was about to say, that yeah. that kind of... Uh, yeah, so they do love like, all the siltiness and the debris and the garbage that's under the jetty. And I guess that leads back to why they call it muck diving, because yeah. you're in amongst yeah. all the rubbish and the garbage and the, yeah, exactly. the detritus that's down yeah. there at the bottom. God, the, okay. And that's also why you need to be careful and mindful of your buoyancy, because you don't need, you, you don't want to yeah, stir everything up and, and mess up with the visibility. Also, there are so many stingy things down there. It's in, I'm impressed of how many... Uh, Scorpion fishes, for example, are found at the jetty. So you need to have a, a, a very good buoyancy control. In general, I do suggest divers that I take under the jetty to maybe stay right beneath the surface when they're when they're very shallow. Uh, sometimes we're like at three feet, yeah. so your tank is actually tank well is out of uh, out of the water. So at that point, you, you need to be very mindful of uh, okay. your position in the water. Okay. Yeah. So let's have a little bit more of a look at some of the things that you spot around okay. here in Karaku. very much for sharing that with us Nora that was yeah, fascinating welcome. and I think I'll be attaching this to my BCD and <laughs> going diving to train the eye a little bit more. yeah yeah um, I can bet one on each eye and <laughs> I'll be away um, yeah. well thank you very much if 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 you've enjoyed this video then make sure you smash down on the uh, like button and uh, please give Nora a subscribe uh, for all of her great work that she does um, on macro hunting and critter hunting um, if you've got any feedback, what about the, the macro life that you like? What about the type of diving you like? Big versus little? Mm -hmm. What's your favorite creature to find? Maybe mm. we, we will have those uh, here in Karaoke and we can share. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. share the creature or just share the information? No, I mean the information. I mean, I was about to say, because we pick it up and put it, because some of them look like snot. I mean, you put, it just looked like a, anyway. No. Thank you very much for joining us. Oh, and follow us on Instagram because most of my pictures are there. Oh, videos. yeah, yeah. So a lot yeah. of the stuff that Nora takes so is there. on the D for Diving Instagram channel. We'll, we'll put a link below. And, and thank you very much. Keep watching and stay diving. Bye. Oh, look, we're in sync. <laughs>